Yeah, welcome everyone. As you can see, I found another room with internet. So <laughs> at uh, three o'clock or something like that, at two o'clock. So, and uh, I would like to start with the meditation. Um, we're exploring the first two lines uh, of the first poem we read yesterday, and I just read it to you. You who see that experience has no coming or going. You who see that experience has no coming and going. And it's a homage to Avalokiteshvara, the Buddha of compassion. Uh, the, the symbol for the union of wisdom and compassion. So these two lines, you, see, you who see that experience has no coming and going, yet pour your energy solely into helping beings. So this is the poetic description of that loving gaze of Alekoteshvara, who sees everything as empty, who sees everything as uh, non-findable, as something existing in substance and being real, and at the same time loving everything. And uh, uh, so I would like to give us a bit of a taste how, how that would be, to really open our heart completely to the whole world, and, and at the same time seeing, seeing that experiencing that everything is empty, not findable as something existing in and out of itself. So take your seat. As a human being with feelings, And at one point, you might want to close your eyes if that feels like the right thing. Or if you sit with open eyes and your gaze is relaxed. And allow this shift to happen from the doing to being here. And ask yourself the question, how am I in this moment? How am I? What is here for me? Who is here? How am I? And notice how this question can help you to be with the inner weather, be with your inner life as it is. And with the in-breaths, you slide into the felt sense of your body. And with the out breath, might be the possibility of some release or letting go in the belly and the shoulders. And you unhook from thinking.
and then let's step together as a, a sangha, as the sangha into the temple of our meeting, this virtual meditation room where we connect from heart to heart. And into this space, into this temple, we invite our masters, teachers, mentors, spiritual friends. And you feel you feel their presence with, with your whole body. And, uh, we can also remember that we uh, enter the sacred space of this book. The 37 practices. And uh, by reading these poems, we also connect with the poet, Thomas Sampo, who lived in the 12th century. A human being with feelings just like us. And we also connect with the lineage of this text, which has been handed down through all the generations until today. Oh, my teacher, Lama Sopa Rinpoche, and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So reading a text like that has a particular blessing or inspiration in it. Because so many people, just like us, have been reading these poems and have been inspired by them and challenged by them. And this text is being read right now by many others. So when you enter a text like this, you are never alone. And see if that makes a difference for you right now in your experience. Anchoring yourself in present moment awareness with the breath and the sounds around you. Softening and opening to what is. And returning to present moment awareness when you get carried away by the inner dialogue.
So notice the content of your experience, sensations, sounds, thoughts. mental images, smell, and notice that it is changing moment by moment, that there is a coming and going, like a flow. Everything is energy, vibrating, nothing stays the same. And you relax more and more. You give. You don't try not to put something into it, or try not to take something away. Just opening. Just being aware. Just being present. And then become aware that whatever you experience right now, whatever it is, pleasant, unpleasant, with your five sense thoughts and the mental consciousness, mental images and the inner dialogue, that all of that is appearances, uh, appearances in consciousness and awareness. Pause you for a moment and confirm that for yourself. Kind of look around or feel around and confirm for your for, confirm for yourself that all these experiences, the content of your awareness right now, what you're conscious of. All of that is appearances in consciousness and no awareness. Also what you see, what you hear, what you, what you smell, what you feel in your body. The experience of your body, all of that. It's an appearance in awareness, just like a dream. Just like a dream is an appearance in the consciousness of the dreamer. Well, so exactly like that, this moment is an appearance within awareness, within consciousness. The sense of I, everything.
in these appearances, they don't have any substance. They vividly appear like a rainbow, but there's nothing real there. It's just an appearance within consciousness, made out of consciousness. Just like the appearance in the dream, they are made of consciousness. See if you can have a taste of that. Now your whole experience right now, as it is, including the experience of solidity you might have of the ground you're sitting on or your bones or so even the appearance of solidity is an empty appearance within consciousness. There's nothing real there. It's just an appearance like a rainbow. Vividly appearing, yet, yet empty. Empty of any substance. And just play with that a little. If you can get a taste of that, dreamlike, rainbow-like quality of whatever you experience right now. Just very, very relaxed. You don't need to concentrate or focus. Very, very relaxed, very sweet, simple. And if something comes into the foreground, pleasant or unpleasant, just uh, try to perceive the insubstantiality. So whatever it is, whatever comes, If you focus on a certain aspect of your experience, then the same. You focus on a certain aspect like the breath or the sensation in your hands, but you emphasize a bit uh, insubstantiality, that it is an empty appearance within consciousness, made from consciousness, and that there's nothing real there. There's also not a real I here, a real me. There might be a sense of me, which is an appearance within consciousness, without any substance. There's no real I, there's just a spacious And broaden your awareness and into all direction. And noticing that there's also no boundary, no end to this field, no boundary in this field of of empty appearances and space. Let's see if you can emphasize the spaciousness a little. 
that there is the coming on going of empty appearances, but there's also a spaciousness, sky-like spaciousness. and rest in that openness with a heart like the sky. with a heart like the sky. So everything which arises dissolves into the vastness of a heart like the sky. Every sensation in your body, maybe there's some difficult feelings in your experience right now. Maybe there's memories of people, a sense of your surroundings, and allow all these appearances to dissolve in the vastness of your heart. Just resting in that peace. Every thought, every sensation, every sound, empty appearance, dissolving in the sky-like nature of your heart. And breathing in kindness and love and breathing out kindness and love without the need to do anything without the need to figure anything out you who see that there is no coming and going. Not really. There's the appearance of coming and going. But nothing really happens. Just like a dream. Dream like, dream like, like experiences. Coming and going. And you rest. And that which is bigger than all of that, which is the sky-like nature of your own heart. You're glowing your loving presence or radiating your loving presence into all directions. And resting. Just like Avalokiteshvara, Shenrizik, the Buddha of compassion.
you see that there's not really a coming and going. And yet your heart is wide open. without boundary, without center, centerless love. And then take your time if you have your eyes closed open your eyes and stay within your body appreciating that it's very easy for us when we open our eyes to collapse back into the dualistic distortion, into a sense of separation. As, as if you are inside somewhere, behind your skin, looking out into a world which is separate from you. So if you, if you try to keep that intimacy, with uh, which you can have with sound and with the sensation and thoughts and feelings more easy. If you also if you play with that to bring that also into seeing, yeah, because also what you see with your eyes right now is a appearance within consciousness, within awareness. So also what you see with your eyes is an inner experience. You never see an outside world. If there is one, nobody knows. Almost everyone seems to say there is no outside world. Even the scientists now that say this. Yeah. This was um, my uh, invitation to maybe get a bit of a taste what uh, Tom Isanpo is pointing to in these first two lines. Um, You who see that experience has no coming or going, yet pour your energy solely into helping beings. My excellent teacher, my excellent teachers and Lord all seeing, I ever humbly honor with my body, speech and mind. I think it's always good uh, when you read uh, a poem like that um, to pause and uh, you know, to, to uh, resonate with the words, what, what is happening for you, you know? So that's, uh, that's always the question, what is happening in my, my, in, in my inner life when I, when I hear or when I read uh, lines like that? 
my excellent teachers. So who are your teachers? And um, can you feel uh, that that urge in your heart or that sense in your heart uh, to bow, to, to pay homage to them? It's such a beautiful, uh, such a beautiful part of our practice. To do that. To remember that uh, the teachings we now started, that they have been handed down all the generations. Um, so it's beautiful if uh, part of one's daily practice is a bit of uh, bowing and remembering, uh, not taking this for granted. I want to uh, read you uh, read a quote from the commentary of Ken McLeod. He's describing the essence of compassion, and it is uh, something I I try to bring into our meditation. So the essence of compassion it arises in that profound and indescribable stillness and reaches out to ease the pain of the world. The compassion arises in the profound and indescribable, indescribable stillness. And it reaches out to ease the pain of the world. I really lo love the language of uh, Ken McLeod. So when I uh, read a line like that, I pause and I feel into myself, what what is he sharing here? Because Ken McLeod also, he always writes from his own experience. So he tries to share his own experience. So, It arises in that profound and indescribable stillness. Is that something when you hear these words? Profound and indescribable stillness. Is, is there something in you responding in your heart? I, uh, in, in our guided meditation, I use the word, uh, the vastness of your heart, the sky-like nature of your heart, the heart like the sky. Uh, Ken McLeod also uses the word pond, the pond, yeah, the still pond. So there is something within our experience right now which is already deeply at peace. There is something in, in your experience right now, which is deeply at peace. And um, in a way, you could you could say that our spiritual practice is is about uncovering that loving stillness, which is already the case. 
making contact with that loving stillness. There is also like a gradual approach to that, you know, working with that, which seems to uh, cover up that profound stillness, that profound peace. And I think that kind of work and healing work is probably necessary, but at each moment on the gradual path, we can also go, let's say, down. Yeah, it's, You can't really localize it, but you can always go down because that fundamental well-being within you is always present, no matter how cloudy it is on the surface. And this is so... So so beautiful in the in this text, and particular with the commentary of Ken McCloyd, that it is this combination with uh, of the gradual path, working with the clouds, working with that which seems to uh, prevent us to be in peace right now, and at the same time, always the point and remembering that it is actually already present here. And this profound and indescribable stillness reaches out to ease the pain of the world. One of my teachers, uh, Lama Yesha, says here that the nature of that stillness is in the nature of love. Yes, yeah, so any comment? Question, how did the meditation go? Was it helpful? I, I always, uh, I always try to share my experience with with my meditation. find that I, I slip into um, like, I mean, I would call Elijah Vijana, like going to stream of mental sphere and within the deep relaxation, within deep settle, and then, mm -hmm. um, and then come back to a more clear awareness of the present moment. But the, the wavering from one to the other. Uh, it's a bit difficult to understand you uh, because oh. you're maybe maybe your microphone is far away. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's a little better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, 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 the the awareness moves into like stream of mental sphere of just like kind of into the ocean. And then mm -hmm. there's lost in it, and then coming back to, uh, there's some sort of something the mind grasps onto, whether it's the body, sensations, your voice, that brings back a little bit more awareness, or mm -hmm. or, or formed awareness versus just a, a flowing. Yeah. Could you connect with that image of the of the stillness uh, within the stillness? I start to I start to slip into that deeper that deeper state. Yeah, yes. and then, mm. then lose the strength of the awareness. Mm. 
And can you, uh, can you, uh, do you, does it make sense for you that within that stillness there is love? There's, I don't know, like there's some aspiration at times, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's, there's intention in that aspiration. Yeah. What would be the aspiration? The aspirations for, for um, wellness or for good, for, for a sort mm -hmm. of um, good yeah. conditions or smiling, a sort of gentle yeah. smiling. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. Yes, thank you. So let's go to the next poem, which is the intention. So we have not yet start, started the 37 practices. So this is the introduction part. Full awakening, Buddha, the source of joy and well-being, comes as you master the noble way. Because mastery depends on knowing how to practice, I now explain the practice of all bodhisattvas. So full awakening. Buddha. Yeah. The source of joy and well-being. So Maybe that could be a moment to reflect and feel into what is your intention in your practice. In your own practices, is there something like full awakening? Is that something you have um, accepted as a possibility for yourself? What is your what is your 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 aspiration, your intention, and in your practice? Do you feel, do you, do you, uh, do you have a, a, a trust, a faith that full awakening is actually possible for you? So it's one thing to um, accept that it has been possible for Tibetans uh, a few hundred years ago or a few maybe for some of the masters who are around now or whatever tradition you're practiced in. There seems to be people who you could call awakened. Uh, but uh, it's a different thing to um, put your money onto your own awakening. And how Serious are, are are you about it? So Tongme Sangpo says the source of joy of joy and well being is full awakening. That's the source of joy and well being. Is that how 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 big is that in your life? How much do you still put your money into? sources of well-being, of joy, which are not connected with awakening, which are not connected with healing, which are not connected with growing up and waking up. Do 
is it really the case? Have you have you have you have you all really accepted that only full awakening is the source of joy and well-being? Or well, how much is the fridge or a holiday or walking the Camino? Uh, how much um, how much is seems that to be the source of joy and well-being? What's your map for our awakening? Is there a deep yearning, a deep longing in, in you to wake up in this life and do, and do you all this, all this nodding and uh, do you do you put your 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 intention into it? Your 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 energy. And uh, full awakening comes as you master the noble way, Tom Tom Asapa said. So full awakening doesn't fall from the sky. So if you if we have accepted the possibility for full awakening, uh, then uh, we need to create the causes for it. And Tong Mesampo says it comes as you master the noble way. Because mastery depends on knowing how to practice. So mastery depends on knowing on how, how to practice. That's why you're reading this text. I now explain the practice of all bodhisattvas. So, Tong Sampo now, for the rest of this text, and the 30, 37 practices actually explains us how to do it. Yeah, Lorna, Lorne. Yes, um, the, what arises is the, the full awakening is, we're talking about full awakening through conditions, and yet there's the paradox of full awakening to be unconditional. Mm. I mean, ultimately it's to be unconditional, and then, but we're using conditions, and then, like that paradox. Yes. Um, yeah. How does you know the mind wants to like a coin wants to? That's right. Yeah. I. I have not solved that paradox. And um, uh, sometimes I feel like uh, Tom, uh, like uh, sometimes I feel like Ken McLeod, I just stop talking about these things. <laughs> uh, because in a way it's hopeless. But on the other hand, uh that's where you know on the other hand it's it's precious to come together in circles like this and just share the something which is full of paradox and uh, um, yes yes noam yeah, yeah. I think Alex was before me. His hand is hard to yeah. see. It's hiding in the sunset. Okay, <laughs> okay Alex, yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, I should change the color back on. Um, I was just going to say, the so first of all, I think you make a really good, good point about sort of believing and awakening and sort of asking yourself, because the answer could be or should be in some sense, like it's your highest priority, 
But then when you look and check and how you sort of, even in your, your daily life, like it does, does it bear out, you know, as it, as it mm. being your highest priority, even if it's like a background intention, like, um, does that prove out? And it's not to say that in your daily life, even if it doesn't on its face appear to be sort of awakening oriented, could still be sort of infused with that energy if it really is that strong, highest intention behind everything. That is to say, our, mm. our daily life can, in fact, be an awakened life. Um, mm. But it does, but just sort of assuming that because you have this sort of background intention, it, it doesn't bear out. But I think that this it's this third line because mastery depends on knowing how to practice. I think it's interesting. We sort of approach teachings sort of full of conditioning in the sort of beginning part of our journey. And, you know, for me in particular, like I wanted to understand everything, like understand conceptually what all of this really means, um, sort mm -hmm. of very head oriented and, that's one way to practice. And um, I think as I, as those insights come and go, sort of bringing me in with teachers that brought me more into my body and through breath or other, just sort of that energy practice that that, that way of practicing actually really was a great augment. It was almost, I didn't realize that I needed to practice that way because I was so stuck with mm. so much conditioning that didn't even know that was a, a way possible and so a lot of a lot of it kind of this knowing how to practice de depends on practice that is to say it reveals itself if you're open to mm -hmm. it like it reveals itself in different ways and not just maybe doing what you thought and originally was the only or, or right way to go yeah yes that's right in my experience, also in my own practice, but also what I observe uh, with with others, it is actually helpful to uh, be inspired by different teachers and even lineages and approaches and um, um, and um, uh, not being not being loyal to a certain lineage or a certain teacher, but rather being loyal to one's own healing process, to one's own awakening. And, 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 and leaving practices also when they don't have any impact anymore, any, any, any healing anymore, trying different things. And for sure, what you would say about the body, I mean, it's coming back to the body. That's really important. And then there was someone else, I think. Oh, yeah, my hand went down on its own. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's no, um, uh, thank you. Stefan, I, I found the meditation really beautiful. And um, uh, thinking about your question, I think until fairly recently, I was like, well, enlightenment, whatever, like maybe, I don't know, but does it really matter? And uh, I have a teacher who's mm. been pushing me on that a lot. Like, okay, I want to alleviate suffering as much as possible. That that makes a lot of sense, right, for myself mm. and others. But why do I care to be enlightened? Enlightened, and I've been feeling into that more, and and just starting to. At first, it felt like pressure. It's like, do I have to want to be enlightened? You know, but I just see it mm. more as a, a more ultimate level of alleviation of suffering, and so mm. I think I'm getting mm. there. But um, mm. but uh, what I wanted to say was. Uh, that I think it's useful to ask oneself that question on a day-to-day -day basis of sort of everything I do, is it is it moving me toward that or not? And, and it's a little, it can be a little, uh, what's the word I wanna say? Like, like I've kind of been leaning towards 
not trying to make that determination all the time because it's a it's it is also dualistic and there is a kind of in the moment am i mm. you know am mm. i sort of acting with integrity am i am i am i being conscious am i being aware you know these are questions mm. i'm okay with asking mm. myself it's sort of like well should i do the camino or not is that in line with enlightenment or not that just is overwhelming mm. and i don't feel like that, i can decide uh, things that way you know yeah. no yes yeah I, I i mean personally i i don't use the word enlightenment in my own i, I in my teachings or also in my own in my own inner dialogue uh, the tibetan kind of uh, uh, enlightenment. I mean, that's so far out. I I I, 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 I can't connect with that at all. Um, but what I can connect with is uh, maybe in line what you just said is um, how aware am I? How how awake I am I now? Yeah. How 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 also in integrity is important. Like yeah. How. Um, like I mean, I I walk the Camino in in order to do something good for my body, and I I like to walk. It's very good for my body and to be in this climate, and it's like taking care of myself. Um, because um, I have been. Uh, I have been giving too much from for many many years, so I I kind of slow down and take care of myself. So, but now in the so that's kind of part of my healing healing project and um, to take care to take more care for myself and do more of the things I really enjoy to do, and and walking is one of the things I I like to enjoy, and. Um, and then, uh, and then, my practice uh, here on the Camino is is then mainly uh, mindfulness practice. How 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 am I? How aware am I? Uh, how how I, how much I, am I in connect connected with reality instead of drowning in my thoughts? Yeah. So that's my main practice. And yeah. Yeah, what what you're talking about reminds me of one of the the thirty seven is leave your homeland behind and leave your family and loved ones behind. When when you're talking yeah. about Camino, that's what comes. To mind. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Even as uh, you no, know, sometimes leaving your homeland means also leaving your sangha, <laughs> leaving your like leaving the the spiritual uh, like home you know one has your statement uh, yeah, yeah 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 so that's that's sometimes necessary to do that yeah. who am I without that you know who am I without being a Buddhist teacher or uh, like a sangha member or you know who who am I without all of that. I think of it as you said the word reality before, but for me, the reality is what we hold on together and existence is what we walk into when we let go of the realities. Yeah. Yeah. For me, rea reality, when I use the word reality, I mean the the present moment awareness. Yeah. So without experience. the overlay of projections, so that, that, yeah, the experience right now, that's what I mean with reality. Yeah. Stepping and, into and, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And that's kind of, I mean, one can understand the word awakening in different ways. But for me, it's like, um, it, that's awakening. And, you know, I can be awake in this moment uh, if, I, if I'm here, if I'm present, if I'm responding to what is happening in this moment from a genuine place yeah? with less reactivity. That's kind of a bit of an awakened moment, a Buddha moment. Elizabeth. Yes. 
Um, I came in a bit late uh, in the end of yeah. your uh, meditation, but as I have been listening to you before and your meditations, and so I kind of connect with your voice, I guess, because mm. the pointers that you use are also so profound in their simplicity. And I could all, mm. I could really resonate with the, the pond, the image of the pond. It instantly gave me a sensation in my body of that stillness. Yes. Mm. And of the flower, the lotus in the mm. pond. Uh, mm. Uh, mm. So that's something that I will carry with me in my practice uh, from here on. Mm. And mm. I guess I, I can't walk the Camino and there are a lot of things that I can't do in my life. Uh, so I guess life put me in a situation where I can't do a lot of things because I I got sick in COVID uh, th two and a half years ago mm. and then I got post-COVID. So I have a mm. lot of brain fatigue yeah. and a lot of body fatigue. So I can't interact and be social and I'm not working. And it takes mm -hmm. a lot of effort and I don't have the capacity and to do things or to be social with family or friends and work. And so this winter, I, I really was confronted with who am I if I can't um, oh. be a doer, if I can't have a job, mm -hmm. am, I, am I worthy? Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. was a huge grieving period for me. Mm -hmm. But then as I have a, a deep love for humanity and for people and feel compassion for people in whatever they do and whatever they are like, that okay, can I apply this to myself? Mm. Can I apply this compassion towards myself? And then after a while, of course, I am worthy of love and happiness, even though I can't be a doer as in society you're supposed to do and then you get paid money mm. and then you're worthy of the uh, happiness and everything uh, so life has put me in this situation how can i make my life meaningful so that has been my practice with a, a lot of acceptance with not having so much abilities and not being social facing a lot of uh, loneliness um, but mm. the awakening in that I, I see most of the time I see my situation as uh, a blessing because it really stopped me in my old routines in my own old strategies because everything just fell apart I couldn't I couldn't do anything but mm. then also as I couldn't do anything it was okay for me not to do anything and for a couple of weeks, I had people coming and help me in my home also because I couldn't cook and I couldn't, <laughs> I, I also had a disherniated disc, so I couldn't walk. I couldn't get out of my apartment even. So, but as tough as it's been, it's been a blessing. Yeah. A but blessing. Did, did, could you experience the, that in, while it was happening? Could you like? Could you could you experience it? Like, I mean, yes. have you read no. have, have have you read the uh, the thirty seven practices? Uh, can I no, I, I haven't. I just yeah. popped into yeah. this. <laughs> so yeah, because, I read it. Uh, because it seems that you are you don't need to read it. <laughs> <laughs> but that that is so, why I, I, I have been I have been a practitioner for many years, but. Now yeah. that I am out of being social with people and working, I do watch a lot of uh, series uh, and, and mm. TV and, and movies because I need the company. And when it's really, really tough mm. and I can't face the loneliness and the anxiety that it gives, mm. I kind of have compassion with myself and let myself mm. do escapism mm. as it is mm. because I just can't sit here sure. with it all the time. Yeah. But to to have this with me that it's it's real but not true, mm. and the aspiration to find truth in everything, 
and then to be aware and awake and isn't that awakening that you can be awake in, in your daily life mm. and i do practice yes. a lot of mindfulness because my brain capacity doesn't function so that is also a blessing i don't have the conceptual mind working as fast and as well as it used to when i was analyzing mm. things uh, so i do a lot of body embodiment of feelings mm. and emotions so that is what i can do and uh, i can i can meditate and i can pray for humanity and for the world uh, that i can do that mm. maybe instead of going to a convent <laughs> life presented me with this mm. yes thank you elizabeth Let's see. So that was the intention. Let's go to the first. I think now comes the. Yeah, now that we are starting with first one, so first practice of the 37 practices. And this is uh, if you are connect, uh, if you are familiar with the Lam Rim teachings of the Guluk tradition. So this is uh, what is called the precious human life, the teaching on the precious human life. Right now you have a good boat, fully equipped and available, hard to find. So right now you have a good boat, fully equipped and available, hard to find. So let's take a few moments to reflect on what is meant with this good boat. So, um, well, there's really interesting sounds here, like dogs and horses <laughs> in far away the ocean. Um, so right now you have a good boat, fully equipped and available. So that's referring uh, in the in the teachings on the precious human life, it's called the eight freedoms and 10 endowments. Um, so I, I'm not going to mention them all, but uh, so if you if you, uh, stay in the present moment right now, right now you can hear, right? So let's appreciate that, yeah, that you can hear. You can hear my voice, yeah? And uh, if you ever, I mean, it's it's something we take for granted, but it's actually something very precious. I don't know if you have, have ever seen like this YouTube videos of people who couldn't hear and then they get some operation done and then for the first time they hear the voice of their lover or something, you know, how they burst out in, in, in tears and it's the most precious moment magic moment of their life yeah and here we are just hearing yeah i mean it's amazing particular voices yeah like elizabeth just mentioned to uh, mentioned she had listened to me uh if, i mean maybe on my podcast or something so she will recognize my voice for the rest of her life <laughs> yeah it's amazing that that um that uh, we have this capacity, you know, and voices are so rich. Yeah. So then also, I think everyone here can see, probably. Looks like everyone can see. So that's also amazing. Yeah. Shapes and colors. We can read the text. Uh, then smell, taste, it's not so important right now, but, you know, after you maybe have a second breakfast or I, I will eat something like smell and taste, very, very wonderful you know, to have smell and taste. Uh, and then breath, yeah, so just, you know, breathing. 
Breathing in and breathing out. Yeah. Really precious. Maybe you, maybe you remember a time when it was difficult for you to breathe. And right now you're just sitting here and breathing. It's really wonderful. There's many people who are right now would give all their money for being able to just breathe in, in, a, in a simple and straightforward way as we do now. And then um, uh, connect with the softness of your heart. Yeah. So right now you have the capacity to open your heart a little to to the people in this meeting. You know, let's start there. You know, just looking, connecting with the people in the meeting, feeling some sense of kinship. I'm together with people who who suffer just like me and who have similar questions like me and are on a similar path just like me. So you can feel the softness of your heart very easily. It's so precious, yeah? So precious that, that you have that capacity to, to open your heart, to be kind to yourself and others. And then also, we all have, I think, almost probably everyone here, we all have food, water, and shelter today. Yeah. We have food. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't have food, <laughs> but I had a good lunch. So, uh, uh, and there, there's nothing around here where I can buy something. But, but uh, I, uh, tomorrow I can have breakfast. Yeah. So, Food. Yeah, we have food. We have water. That's a, I mean, all of us probably on this call, we can just go to the bathroom and take a shower. And, and we have shelter. I think all of us, uh, we have a bed for tonight. Yeah? So, and then on top of all of that, um right now we are connecting with uh, the wisdom teachings of the Tibetan tradition, an unbroken lineage, a time-tested practice which gave results. I mean, uh, the, the, the 37 practices, uh, they are the kind of the heart, the core practices of many masters in the Tibetan tradition. And uh, if you if you meet these masters, if you are uh, if you are fortunate to meet the masters, and but probably all of us we know we know His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So this this tradition creates results uh, when you when you do the, when you practice. Yeah. Um, so and we are here in this moment. We are we are we have all this. Yeah. Not only food, water, and shelter, but we, we have the Dharma. Yeah. We have found the Dharma. We found a Sangha. Yeah. Dharma collective. Maybe that's your spiritual home. Uh, so that's really, really fortunate. And that is the good boat, fully equipped and available. Yeah, this is what Tongma Sangpo means with that. And it's it's this fully equipped boat is is available right now, and it's hard to find, right. It's hard to find. I mean, we are we we are so rich, and we have been rich probably all our life. So it's really hard to find. Even if we would have all the other things, you know, the senses and kind of an okay health. Uh, okay, maybe we have all probably some 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 health challenges, you know, but we are here on this call, so it can't be too bad. So we all we have all of that, but on top of that, 
we have this access to the teachings, to meditation, just to 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 healing techniques, healing modality. So in this good boat, fully equipped, the precious human life, to free yourself and others from the sea of samsara. So that, that boat has the capacity to free yourself and others. You can help others. You can, uh, you can be in service for others. So now he says, day and night, constantly study, reflect, and meditate. This is the practice of a bodhisattva. So how that how, how does that make you feel to hear day and night, constantly study, reflect, and meditate? This is the practice of a bodhisattva. Yeah. Day and night, constantly study, reflect, and meditate. This is the practice of a bodhisattva. That's uh, something to, yeah, to feel into what that means for you. And also to be aware uh, where it might pressure you. Yeah. What does it mean to meditate, study, and reflect day and night? Do you, do you have a sense that that is something available or even something you would inspire, aspire for. I have met people who do who really embody that, particularly one of my teachers, Lama Sopar and Bochi. But then also, you know, what does it mean to meditate? So one can have different definition of what what it means to meditate. I think uh, if many of us, if you have been around teachings for a while, probably if you reflect on today, for example, you know, when you from the time you woke up this morning, probably the Dharma was there somehow. Yeah, somehow. I mean, those of you who have been around teachings, let's say for five, 10 or 15 years, I mean, it's almost impossible to, to, to not have uh, the Dharma <laughs> in, in any kind of, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's always somehow there. We, we kind of, you get, get into a certain, ways to look at things and and even if uh, even if you yeah what does it mean not to what does it mean not to meditate what does it mean not to practice difficult to say i mean I, sometimes people say uh, yeah, I watch Netflix. Yeah, or, and that's not Dharma practice. But isn't is is that the case? I mean, um, couldn't I mean? You can't bring you can't take away your knowledge about the Dharma while you watch Netflix. It, it will it will be there some somehow, reflecting on suffering. Uh, or even um, a big part of one's dharma practice has to be the has to be rest. Yeah. So sleeping. Yeah. I mean, we we all need to sleep so that we can that we can do something tomorrow. Yeah. So also sleeping, eating, everything. You know, everything. So maybe we can actually say, I don't know. C can we say 
we day and night constantly I study, reflect, and meditate. No, I don't know. I I think I mean I'm in this business for a long time. I think I can say it. I I think I can say I study, reflect, and meditate all the time, day and night. I don't know if this is uh, if this is arrogant to say it, but I mean, just my guru devotion is like all the time. I mean, when I walk, you know, I mean, I do the mindfulness and stuff like that, but I I never walk away from the presence of Lama Sopa Rinpoche. It's impossible for me. He is always, he is, he is, he is this. I mean, he is, he is, I can't, I can't, I can't get away from him. <laughs> I mean, him not as the person, he, he died uh, some, some months ago, but him as, him as, um, Buddha nature or MS love. Day and night, constantly study, reflect, and meditate. This is the practice of a bodhisattva. What, what, what this shouldn't do with us is like, to uh, to put pressure into our life, guilt, or you know, like guilt and fear, or duty, or I'm not good enough. Uh, so that's 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 what what could happen with this, uh, but that would be a misunderstanding. I would rather. Be Rejoice in the many moments when you notice that there is a dharma thought or something. Uh, to, I think I think many many dharma practitioner practitioner underestimate how much they actually practice. That's my impression when I talk with people, because they you know then people say, "Yeah, I." I, I have such a difficulties with my daily meditation practice and I don't do it. Um, and then when I interview with them and I ask them, you know, what, what how they reflect doing daily life and so, and how much meditation is actually in their life. Maybe not formal daily meditation practice, but Moments of awareness, moment, moments of reflection, moments of introspection, moments of kindness towards others. So we have the precious human life. I'm alive. That's the boat hard to find. And then in one of the next verses, it gets a bit uh, uh, an urgency by remembering death. Yeah. So death is certain, the time of death is uncertain. But now, today, and you're so lucky, you are, at the, you are at the beginning of your day. Yeah. So you're at the beginning of the day. So you have a whole day in front of you. Yeah. Uh, my day is now almost finished. Yeah? <laughs> but you have a whole day uh, with this uh, beautiful start of the day. You know, this is really like, I mean, this is, we, we, we studied, we reflected, and we meditated now for one and a half hour. Yeah? It, the three things, they were here. Study not so much, but a little. Yeah. But we reflected a lot and we meditated a lot. 
So that's a good start. You really took advantage now uh, of the precious human life. And now you have a whole day to remember to take something, you know, something from this meeting into your day, whatever, whatever is useful, whatever resonated with you. You take it with you and then you have a meaningful day. Thank you so much. See you in two weeks, already in two weeks. Uh, and then I will be in Copenhagen, I think. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. And we dedicate the merit into all directions, over the oceans to you, United States, from Denmark, from Portugal, Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.